none of evil intent could pass such a barrier.
The sight had become painfully all too familiar, the sorrow always hard for the Guardian to bear, not able to save, only to avenge. When all was thought lost, when the struggle was becoming too heavy a burden, a young voice cried out. Stifling his sobs, the small boy spoke of his mother. She was not far away, and returning to her was his only need. Tears slipped down the mother's face in praise of her good fortune, thankful for her son's safe return. And for the briefest of moments, the burden of Mount Morta became lighter upon the hero's shoulder. Rhea's mercy can make the impossible possible, is all Margaret whispered.
welcome, friend, the shopkeep greeted. Don't mind the occasional bloodstain on the merchandise. the circle. Prevent the summoning. A new challenger appeared. Thank <laughs> you. 
Nea Daya, the mother of beasts and goddess of anguish, the protector, being of stone made living. Finally free of the corruption's hold, Anaya Dyer gazed upon the Bergson, her emerald eyes weary with exhaustion. Its words took life, forming images to reveal what was hidden from the Bergsons. And us, spirits three, knelt before the mountain god U to swear fealty. Our wills were set on peace. His was set on testing ours. And as the test drew to a close, we discovered our wretched ending. Mountain God exacted vengeance on the children of Rhea Dana and tainted Rhea with the corruption. Thus was another truth revealed to the Bergson, but many more were hidden still. Questions were abundant in the Bergson's minds. If the mountain god was the source of the corruption, what had made him wreak such havoc? How had no one known about him before? They needed to find the next spirit, as maybe they had an answer to some of their questions. More truths awaited them in the land of the winds. Why would the mountain god corrupt the world? What kind of evil was it that brought it forth? 
For Margaret, these questions were as important as where and how.